So welcome everyone to Bridging Voices uh, third training in our ALS and communication series. Um, the session today is going to focus on ALS and alternate access. This is uh, part one of a two training series. So you can stay tuned for part two. Uh, next slide. Uh, the agenda today is pretty straightforward. I am going to give a brief introduction to Bridging Voice. Um, many of you on the call are already familiar with the organization, but I see a few new names. Um, and then after my brief interview, uh, brief overview, I will hand it off to Eddie Ehrlich, our presenter today, who will dive into today's topic of alternate access. Um, and then we're going to save a nice chunk of time at the end for uh, Q and A. So it should be a good should be a good session today. Uh, next slide. Great, so my name's Karina. I'm the executive director of Bridging Voice. And Bridging Voice, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with us, we are a nonprofit um, and we are focused, oops, sorry, just, if, I'm gonna ask a few more people to mute themselves here. Thank you. Okay. Um, so Bridging Voice is a nonprofit that supports ALS patients by providing holistic support for all of their technology needs related to communication and alternate access. So we're very specific. Uh, the reason we were created is that our team saw an issue of ALS patients either not getting the technology they needed, um, and even when they did get it, um, it wasn't being fully utilized. And often we saw this issue of technology abandonment. So our goal as an organization and as a team is to ensure that every ALS patient has access to the support they need to access their technology and to be able to communicate. Um, all of our services that we provide are done remotely. Uh, so that's why we work with people all over the country. And we have such a great mix on the call today. Um, and all of our services are also provided free of charge. Uh, next slide. Um, this is just a brief overview of um, the, the uh, services that we provide. As I mentioned, it's very holistic. So it's everything from providing education and resources um, to help ALS patients or PALS understand what technology might be right for them. We provide training and ongoing support um, for that technology. Uh, we also create customized solutions to make sure that the technology is working for every PAL's individual needs. Um, and then lastly, we uh, create innovations. So our team um, are incredible group uh, of, uh, of professionals uh, with a lot of tech background. So they're, they're constantly creating um, really awesome innovations that help make PALS life easier. And our job as an organization is to help share those with the widest community possible, all free of charge. Uh, next slide. Yep, I just love maps. So this is a map of uh, the, the area where we're currently supporting PALS. Um, as, of to, as of yesterday, we were supporting, um, we've supported over 992 PALS uh, across 46 states. So since our services are provided remotely, we're able to work with um, families all across the United States and growing every day, hoping to hit a thousand by the end of the year. <laughs> uh, next slide. Great. I just want to just flag um, our New Jersey initiative. This is our very first statewide initiative um, that we're very excited about. Um, this initiative allows us to provide all of our services to every single ALS patient in the state of New Jersey free of charge. So uh, we're asking all of you to help us spread the word. We wanna make sure that um, PALS across New Jersey know about this. So if you're a New Jersey PAL, um, if you work with PALS in New Jersey, please have them check out our dedicated website, newjersey.bridgingvoice.org. There is a short sign up form there. It takes two minutes and they can sign up and then they will hear directly from our team um, to provide uh, whatever support that they need. Next slide. Okay, that ends the uh, overview of Bridging Voice. Now it is my pleasure to hand this off to my colleague, Eddie Ehrlich, who is our assistive technology specialist. And he is definitely the alternate access guru on our team. Um, and I am excited to hand over the presentation to Eddie. All yours. Hi, I'm Eddie. And today's topic is alternate access. 
because there are so many alternate access options, this presentation, as Karina said, is just part one. As PALs undergo physical changes that alter or diminish their abilities, alternate access needs are very likely. So what is alternate access? A new or different method, strategy or tool to allow or maintain the use of a computer, phone or tablet. Alternate access can include equipment, software, hardware and strategies that complement or replace standard access methods. So alternate access doesn't have to only be limited to computers, phones, and tablets. You can use the term alternate access when you're talking about light switches and TV remote controls and wheelchair controllers and even cutlery. But for today, we're going to be focusing on access to computers, phones, and tablets. And indeed, Bridging Voice focuses in the same way on those things. Here's another way to frame and define what is alternate access. So first, if, uh, if standard access on a computer, look at my, um, my air keyboard. So if I keyboard with my fingers uh, or mouse on a computer or on a smartphone, I tap or swipe on the screen, up, down, right, left, then alternate access is using your foot, your voice, your head, your eyes, to control your computer, phone, or tablet, or it may involve using your hands or fingers in a different way than the standard methodology. To give you an idea of what alternate access is, here are just five specific examples of alternate access that PALS use. So one, replacing a mouse with a trackball or a trackpad. So Here's a standard mouse and here's a trackball. So just replacing that as a mousing device. A second is to use a stylus. Um, so instead of tapping with your finger, if it's hard for you to isolate your finger or keep your finger out or other fingers get involved, sometimes using a stylus is helpful. And uh, these uh, larger girth or fatter stylus, styli, or uh, and weighted styli are often easier to use, especially if you have a tremor or difficulty with your grasp. A third method is using sticky keys. For those of you who uh, have seen sticky keys, uh, when you are pressing, uh, uh, capitalizing a letter on a keyboard, you press usually with one hand the shift key and with the other hand you tap the letter. Two hands, two fingers, um, sometimes difficult for PALS to do. So what Sticky Keys does is allow you to use just one hand and press the shift, then press the letter. So it transforms uh, concurrent presses into sequential ones. Um, the fourth example uh, that I'm bringing here is, uh, is entering text by dictation. So the microphone that is right in front of me is also connected on my laptop to uh, using Dragon Professional software for dictation and mouse control. Um, the fifth example is controlling the pointer uh, by head or eye tracking instead of a physical mouse. So this is another mouse substitution, but instead of using your hand as a mouse, maybe your head or eye. And so in the fifth picture down here on the slide, uh, this user is has a Kuha Zono head mouse on a headband and he's wirelessly controlling what looks like to be an iPad mini. Um, I'll just uh, pick up another um, head mouse alternative. This is called Glass House. It's kind of a, um, uh, it looks like a pair of glasses with no glass, but with a visor on top, a gyroscopic Bluetooth connected mouse so that your head becomes a joystick. Your head movements move the pointer on the screen. So these are five examples of what alternate access is all about. And I hope that gives you an idea if you didn't have one before. Okay, let's take a look at this grid uh, to see where alternate access fits into PAL's lives. So let's look at the
full range in dexterity and weakening, we can roughly divide a PAL's access uh, and communication journey into four quadrants. Uh, if there are PAL, I know that there are PALs and caregivers on this call. So consider your voice and your hand function. Can you locate yourself on this map? What general stage or quadrant are you in? So let's, let's look at each quadrant. When someone has in quadrant one labeled one, when someone has both uh, voice intelligibility and their hand function is strong, it's time to get information about future options and consider the voice pres preservation tools of voice and message banking. So we call that education, get informed. In quadrant two, with the decrease of voice intelligibility, it is time to consider AAC, which stands for alternative and augmentative communication to supplement the loss of natural speech. Quadrant three, with decreased hand func function, there's often a need for alter alternate access, our topic for today. And quadrant four, with significant loss both of voice intelligibility and hand function, alternate access and AAC are needed together. So I want you to please note that Bridging Voice supports PALS in all these four stages. And as you pass from one stage or quadrant to another, we will help assess and evaluate what you need. And again, returning to today's topic and focusing there, if you have lost some hand function, you will probably place yourself in one of the two lower blue-green framed regions, quadrants three, or four, quadrants three or four, and you are likely a candidate for some kind of alternate access. Here's that same map again, with the four general quadrants numbered again, one, two, three, four, but with a listing of some of the tools and devices and strategies in each quadrant or stage. I've also highlighted that alternate access, um, this list uh, are alternate access tools, which is just emphasized today for today's presentation. And if you look at these dashed gray lines, these arrows that are going across, uh, it's an indication that not every PALS follows the same path. Certainly, a PALS may jump in at different points and skip over steps and tools and use just a few or even just one of these items. In addition to today's training, Bridging Voice has already recently done trainings for PALS on communication apps and also on speech generating devices, and we will continue to do more trainings. Here is yet another representation of that same map, and this one by Boston Children's Hospital, with a more pictographic display of specific tools and devices. You can see that there are many, many options in the different categories. And those of you uh, today who are hoping for a full comprehensive run through of all the options that are available will unfortunately be disappointed because today we are focusing on um, alternate access training and we're only looking at voice input and trackball tools. I've chosen those items because they seem to make the greatest impact for the most PAL that I've worked with with Bridging Voice. And specifically, we'll look closely at four items today, three voice input alternate access tools and one trackball. And in future trainings, we'll look at other items belonging to different alternate access methods, such as the use of a stylus or the use of head tracking. So here we go. We're going to now take a look at specifics. And this is a non-comprehensive but very vital list of alternate access tools. These are the four specific items we'll look at today in more depth. One, so I'm looking at this list. Uh, the items are voice control, voice access, Dragon Professional, and the Kensington Expert Mouse Trackball. Not everyone will benefit from these tools. Uh, you, you may or may not find that these are useful. You may have skipped this stage. You may not need this at any time in your journey. But again, these are 
common, commonly recommended uh, tools that are very powerful. To determine what you need, we can arrange an assessment to determine you know, what overall tool would be best for you. For each of these items, we're gonna consider um, uh, what platform it works on, uh, how much it costs, the degree of control that you can expect to get from it, and also its ease of use. So um, a word about this idea of control. You can see that for all of these items, and the reason that they're on this list is that they afford full hands-free control, full hands-free control, full and full hands-free. The Kensington Expert Mouse is usually a hand, a hand-controlled trackball, so it's hard to call it hands-free, but it should afford full control. Basically, this means that you can do everything that you can do by standard methods. You can write and send an email or uh, write a document and, and store and print that, search and purchase on a shopping site, navigate and scroll and um, post on social media. We expect full function from these tools. So pals that I work with, one pals recently completed a memoir using Dragon. Another uses Dragon to control AutoCAD architecture software at work. Another plays Candy Crush with voice control on her iPhone. And another does her banking with voice access on her Android tablet. So let's start to take a, a deeper look. And we'll start leading off the list with voice control. Um, this is a software input tool. It's built in to iOS and Mac devices. And um, if you would, uh, if there are people in this uh, presentation who use this device, who use voice control or know it well, uh, just let us know in the chat that this is something we'd like to take an informal poll. And let's just take a look at the slide in detail. So when is someone uh, a, a good candidate with someone with weakening hands and arms, but has an intelligible voice? Um, the platform again is across all Apple devices and the cost is free, it's built in. The degree of control is full and hands-free. And it is by far of the three voice control voice input systems, the easiest to use. Take a look at the screenshot here. And um, I'm gonna show you a live demonstration in a moment, but I want you to see for a moment that there is a, um, a blue circle with a white microphone in it at the top of the screen. This is a sign that voice control is running. And you'll also notice the numbered icons that every icon on the screen has a number. This will become very important. So I'm gonna stop the screen share for a moment and we'll do a, um, I'll do a live demonstration um, on my iPad and I'll demonstrate uh, how, what you can expect from voice control and why it's so popular. So uh, let's pin that. Let's pin that screen. Let's see if I can find it. I got it, Eddie. It's pinned. Okay, thank you. Everyone should be able to see uh, in the big screen Eddie's iPad. Great. Okay. Um, so uh, I I noted for you before that um, we would expect with voice control running that there would be a blue microphone, uh, a blue circle in the top, but you'll notice that it's not there. So I need to issue the command to wake up that microphone. And the command is wake up. And there's the blue microphone and all the numbers have appeared on the screen. I can control that microphone again with go to sleep and turn it right back off. Very useful for when, I'm, for when I'm thinking what to write. Wake up. Swipe left. Swipe right. 
So simple navigation is terrific. And notice that the microphone stays on. I can keep talking. What I call voice control a very well-behaved piece of voice input software. It doesn't really make errors and uh, activate on, on speech. It really does a good job of, of knowing when a command is isolated. Let's go to um, podcasts. Podcasts is down below. It's the purple icon. And you'll notice that there's a number 30 next to it. And so the command is 30. And we've opened podcasts. Scroll down. Scroll down. Alternatively, almost always the equivalent is swipe up. And a very, very helpful command, scroll to top. Scroll to top. And go home. Go home. So with most voice technology, uh, not foolproof, and you sometimes need to repeat yourself. Uh, usually the cause is that there was some background noise and that the command wasn't isolated, um, but let's go on. So uh, I'm going to open uh, my photo album or photos in, on the iPad, and that has the number 20. So it's this icon right here, 20. And I'm going to open the photo of a cello concert, 16. And I'm going to zoom in, zoom in. Swipe left, swipe left, zoom in, zoom in, go back, go back. Go home, go home. My, repeat, my repeats, by the way, I'm about two feet from the iPad and I have a tablet in front of the iPad blocking. So this is an issue sometimes that uh, we really don't want the phone or the tablet to be in the pal's lap um, uh, by, by needing to bring your chin to your chest, um, your voice is weakened and you're also about two feet from the screen. Uh, however, sometimes the phone and the iPad need to be in the pal's lap because that's where you can use your fingers a little bit. So often there's a conflict between uh, one access method and another. Uh, let me, the last part of this demonstration, I just wanted to do something with text entry. So I'm gonna open notes, 23, And I'm going to add a wisdom uh, to my daily list of wisdoms. Um, and I don't have anything ready. So uh, I'm going to be careful before I get into my text entry. I'm going to try to think what would be a wise thing to do. Uh, so uh, a, a wise thing to, to write. So um, take deep breaths. How about that? So 14. Hide keyboard. Undo that. Hide keyboard. Go to bottom. New line. New line. Take deep breaths. Delete previous two characters. Undo that. Delete previous two characters. Delete previous two characters.
replace breath with breaths. Move left one word. Delete previous word. Go to end. Go to end. Scratch that. Go to end. Exclamation point. Go to sleep. So a little more difficult than I'd expect in my dictation, but the point is, is that I can manage the whole keyboard. I can manage full navigation. That's what this tool is about. Uh, it's not just dictation. It's not just pressing the microphone. It's not Siri uh, who will do some tasks for you. It is a voice replacement for finger input on the screen. Okay, so let's, um, let's unpin uh, that screen and we'll go back to share if we can do that okay that was a lot about um voice control uh we won't spend as much time on the other uh three devices so the next item is the android equivalent of voice control called voice access. Uh, and it, it is at the same point when you have weakening hands and arms and intelligible voice, you might consider using voice access. Once again, if you use this tool, if you use this software, let us know in the chat. The platform is Android, phones and tablets. The cost is free. It's a free download from the Play Store. It's a Google product. Um, and again, it is designed and generally gives full hands-free control. It's not quite as easy to use as voice control, but it's pretty close. If you look at the screenshot here on the right, um, you can see the item numbers, uh, just like in voice control, next to every tappable or clickable menu. And instead of a blue microphone circle, there's a, a little rainbow of color, blue, red, yellow, green, and that is a live microphone. One of the nice things in voice access is this blue microphone button that can be dragged to different areas of the screen. And so if you have some finger control and you wanna tap on that, you can control the microphone that way, turn it on, turn it off. You can also do it by mouse or trackball. Um, one of the things that I don't like about voice access is that the wake up command is not wake up like it is simply on an iPhone or an iPad. It's, hey, Google voice access, which is a lot longer. And there is also a delay that that happens. Um, so uh, it's not as instantaneous. And also, uh, those of you who are Android users like I am, uh, there is a lot of variety and variation across Android models and software versions. And so uh, what we uh, find out is that it works, you know, 100% on one system, but on the next system, uh, there are some commands that just don't work. Uh, the third voice input software tool for today is a well-known product, uh, Dragon once called Dragon Naturally Speaking, now called Dragon Professional. Um, and it's the first one we're looking at today that isn't free. In fact, it's quite the opposite of free. It's uh, very pricey at $500. Um, and uh, you, the built-in microphones on PCs and laptops is just not sufficient uh, for speech recognition so that an add-on microphone is needed. Um, once again, if you use this, uh, if you use Dragon, let us know. Um, we're taking an informal poll today. So uh, a word about those um, those microphones that are needed. So um, uh, I'm for PALS, it's important that someone not wear a headset microphone that needs adjustment. So um, I really recommend um, desktop microphones like the one I'm let me just get, make sure of you my, of myself. 
like this gooseneck microphone in front of my face right now. So um, it is clamped to my desk and can be maneuvered pretty easily. So if I do have some hand function, I can move it into place. And uh, the great thing about it is that it doesn't require any charging or any pairing. It's not a wireless mic. It's a desktop based wired microphone. So it's a plug and play. So the long reach, the non-charging and pairing and not worn, but rather being a desk, a desk mounted microphone is usually what I recommend. So, and, and in unusual cases, of course, there are reasons why someone really wants to wear a microphone. So if they're, um, if getting into the same position every time is difficult, and sometimes you're on this side, sometimes you're on that side, then um, the microphone being static is maybe not the best idea and maybe wearing a microphone is best. Moving on to the fourth and final item for today is um, one of my favorite input devices. This is the Kensington Expert Mouse Trackball. I held it up before. Uh, this is what it looks like in, uh, in, in real life, if you will. Um, and again, if you use this, let me know in the chat. Um, so this is a, a mechanical mouse alternative. So. Um, there are lots of people who use um, trackballs, trackballs of all different kinds. I recommend this particular trackball very frequently, um, but it isn't necessarily something that that works for everyone. Uh, the nice things about uh, a trackball, well, let me just first explain, for those of you who have not used the trackball, if you remember, a standard mice, mouse used to have a ball at the bottom before um, it was an optical mouse. There was a ball that used to collect dust on the bottom of, of a mouse. Um, and some very intelligent person with a messy desk said, um, well, why don't I just uh, turn the mouse over? So the ball used to be on the bottom, right? Just turn the mouse over and I'll move the ball, um, you know, and I won't need to clear an area on my desk. I'll just move the ball, you know, how, however it needs to be moved. And um, so I think that's how trackballs were born, a combination of somebody flipping over a mouse and having a messy desk. So, um, this particular trackball, uh, the large ball, this large ball can be operated by um, any part of your hand. So if your hand is fisted, right? If you have no finger isolation, so despite the picture on the slide, this can be operated with the side of your hand, with a fisted hand, with two fingers together, with a thumb um, to move the ball. Some people even use the heel of their hand or the wrist. Right, so it's about getting that ball in motion. Um, uh, some people even use this with their foot, often with uh, no shoe or sock, so they can really uh, get a feeling for where they, uh, good contact with, with the ball. The ball rolls very freely and easily, and there's actually a pals on this call who told me recently that it didn't work well for him because it was almost too frictionless and that he stuck with the trackball he was using because it actually had a little bit more friction, All right? And uh, uh, the large um, separate click buttons on this, on this trackball that you can see here surround the ball and are separate. That's the other part uh, of the advantage of any trackball is that the, ball, the, the mouse movement and the switch clicking are separate so that you can move and then click. Again, just to demonstrate, so you might move and then click. So you don't need to steady the ball. You need to get to the target and then click, or maybe your click is on this side or maybe on that side. The buttons are programmable. This particular trackball um, is wireless. It's from a reputable company, Kensington. We don't get any commissions um, and it's relatively inexpensive. It's $84 on Amazon. It can be plugged two ways by Bluetooth or by a USB dongle. So uh, I highly recommend it, uh, but I also recommend that you consider other trackballs um, and see which one fits. Last thing about it is that it can sit anywhere. So um, sitting on a desk, but also sitting on your leg. 
again, that lap area for PALS is kind of the sweet spot for access. It's where people end up putting their phones, tablets. It's near where the joystick is on the wheelchair. Um, and so the trackball often sits right there on a pillow, on a lap tray, or directly on your thigh. So um, we've looked at four specific items today. Uh, Karina, why don't you give us a little wrap up? Great, thanks so much, Eddie, that was wonderful. Um, just four quick takeaways for everyone and then we'll get into the Q&A. So feel free to drop any questions into the chat. Um, first takeaway is that there are a lot of options for alternate access, as Eddie mentioned. Um, this again is just part one of our alternate access training. There will be a part two where we'll dive into more. Uh, it's important that PALS find what's right for you when it's right for you. Timing is everything. Um, and that's one of the reasons that Bridging Voice is here to help, to help you understand the technologies that exist and help find the one that is right for you when it is right for you. Um, lastly, I just wanted everyone to know that we will be sharing the recording as well as a handout, a couple of the slides that um, Eddie shared uh, in a follow-up email, um, along with a link to uh, sign up for any future trainings. We, um, as I mentioned, this is uh, the third training in our, a in our uh, ALS and communication series. Um, and we've gotten really good feedback. So we're planning to continue them in 2022. Um, so if you're interested in being updated on uh, those future trainings, we'll send a link out in the follow-up email as well. Um, but now we're going to jump in to our Q&A. So please, if anyone has any questions or comments that they wanna share, please drop them into the chat. Um, again, Eddie is sharing sort of the four alternate access uh, methods or um, uh, topics that he covered today, voice control, voice access, Dragon Professional, and the Kensington Mouse. So if anyone has any questions about any of those, I already had a few coming in. Um, we'll jump into that. And then just letting everyone know, if you have questions uh, for Bridging Voice, please reach out to us at info at bridgingvoice.org. We have our website. We also have the sign up for New Jersey Pals. Um, so all of that information is on the screen as well. Um, I'm going to start Eddie with a question uh, that came in when you were talking about voice control. And the question was how flexible is the voice control with phrasing of commands? Um, so voice control and voice access both, both on iOS and Android are not trainable. So they don't learn from speaking patterns. So I guess inherent in the question is how flexible is the software? So the first thing I just wanna say is that you can't change the software. It is what it is. So you, you have to adapt to its limitations. Um, so phrasing in general, the um, commands need to be run together in all voice input uh, methods, uh, a command like, you know, go to home screen or swipe up three, right, need to be run together in order to not be understood as text, but to be understood as commands. What I like about voice control is that uh, the commands can be very short. So uh, those of you who have like uh, Amazon Echo devices that you might, you know, sometimes the, the commands can get quite lengthy um, because there is no screen for on most of those devices. Um, and so you have to compensate by giving all kinds of information in the command. In voice control, you can do step by step. So you can just say number and then another number and then another number. So. So uh, phrasing sometimes is not important because the commands are quite short. Great. Um, Kara says that this was very helpful. Thank you, Kara. Always glad to hear that. Um, and she had no idea about the Android equivalent for voice control. So glad we covered that. Uh, she asks if you have any info about the built-in Windows voice control on PCs. Right. So this is a, a common question because built-in voice control on PCs is free. It's the free equivalent. And so it just has, uh, and it is, it is viable, but 
it has two problems. One, the recognition is not as good as Dragon Professional. So particularly for, for different, uh, differently spoken um, speech. So I, I mean different from whatever the standard is. So anything non-standard, and that might be um, you know, accented English according to their definition, or change in voice related to ALS. So it's typically not as flexible. And then it has also trouble with uh, full hands-free. There are just different quirks and blocks that make it um, less effective to using fully hands-free. It is a doable product. Uh, it is possible. Um, but uh, again, I chose to, to highlight what I thought was the most effective product despite the $500, the $500 price tag. By the way, I didn't mention that there are grants available for Dragon Professional software. So um, particularly for people who are working, who are working on Windows computers and really need to be on a computer, um, there, there are grants that are available to get that software for free. Great. Um, and then another question um, uh, about Dragon. Uh, how long does it take to learn and get up and running? It's uh, very subjective. So Dragon has, um, has the most complicated uh, command set of the three. So voice control has uh, about 300 commands. Dragon has more than a thousand. Uh, so there are, there are just, and I would say that the difference is not so much in the software, but in the platform. We're, we're very used to phones just being more simplified. And so we go directly to an app and we go directly to a very limited menu, as opposed to on a computer, we have all kinds of Windows management issues that we have to do. Things aren't automatically saved very often. Um, you know, we, we have things that have multiple panes. If you look at a, uh, a pane, I mean that in both, both senses of the word, P-A-N-E and P-A-I-N. Uh, if you're looking at email, you have your inbox and you have your, your list of emails and then you have your preview list. So on a phone, you have a list of emails. If you open it, you open it. So uh, just the Windows interface uh, or a computer interface is just more complex and the the dragon and built in um, and and built in um, Windows speech recognition are just both more complicated. Interestingly, though, um, voice control carries over to a Mac. So uh, I don't have a lot of experience, but I would say that voice control on a Mac is easier than Dragon Professional on Windows. So uh, that's a statement. I don't know. Uh, not a lot of research in that statement, but. <laughs> um, and then a question about voice control. Is there a list of commands that users can study or practice? Can you get the list of commands? So there? there is, the, the uh, actually it's, it's the same place where you turn on voice control. And this is in settings, accessibility, voice control. So if you, if you navigate that way, settings, accessibility, voice control, you'll come to a menu that has 10 options. And the third option, I believe, says customize commands. And it has a list of 11 categories of commands. It's not a good tutorial. It's a list of commands, but they're pretty intuitive. If you have used an iPhone or an iPad for a while, you, you can understand from the command, you know, go home, um, you know, what that means. You can understand swipe right. You can understand, you know, pinch, pinch in you know, like, like a zoom, but sometimes it, it's the pinch that you need, but it's not really zooming. So, um, so the commands, there's a, there's a, um, a standard and comprehensive list of the 300 commands into 11 categories. And, and I just wanted to point out that in those 11, in those 11 categories of commands, five of those categories just have to do with text, dictating, deleting text, editing text, um, you know, so there's a lot to do. I, you saw me struggling with just take deep breaths, right? So um, there's a lot to learn there. That's probably the more complex side of voice control, but they're, they're built into the operating system, uh, the full list. 
Okay, and then we had a question about the trackball from uh, Sandra. She asked if it, the trackball can be used on iPhones. Yes. So for the for people who don't know, first of all, since iOS twelve, um, uh, iPhones and and iPads can accept mice. So uh, uh, I don't know if you want to share. Um, uh, if, do you want to pin my iPad screen again? Uh, can you do that? Um, oh, yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, you so, just need to stop your screen share. All right. So you may you may have spotted this uh, along the way. So for those of you who don't know, um, uh, that circle that's moving across the screen in some sort of choppy way is the mouse pointer that is associated with iOS 12 and above. And I'm actually using my trackball, my Kensington trackball to do this movement. So I just move and click. So I'm going up to it and uh, you're not, uh, and I'm gonna open, you know, the photos again. It's a little clunky cause I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm looking at it through Zoom. So here I am back at, back at my picture. And I think, uh, uh, I can't see how to get back, um, but double click. You know, brings back to a full um, and zooming in, double clicking. So, and and down below is my what is that? The home. There we go. I'm trying to just get out. There we go. <laughs> That's always always good. And I'm and I'm back home. So I did that all by mouse. And so yes to mouse in general and definitely to the Kensington track. So you would do that by a Bluetooth connection, or you can do it actually by a USB dongle, but you need the USB adapter for an iPad iPhone if you want to use that that way. And Eddie, uh, Krista asked, can you adjust the size and contrast of the mouse cursor? Uh, there, there's a limit. There's color size of that circle. There's color size. And I think there may be contrast, not sure about those settings so um but not as much as uh as i'd like i wonder there, whether there's an app for that whether there's uh, some uh setting for that to turn it into a pointer i i get annoyed with that circle because uh, <laughs> sometimes when you have lots of items crowded together where is the pointer you know it's it's the center of the circle i mean you do get used to it but um if but, anyone on the if anyone on this call has experience with changing the the size and contrast of the pointer, please drop it in the, the chat for us. And actually, Kara had a, a great point that she made about voice control back to the question about getting a list um, of commands that uh, in That's voice correct. control, you can also say, show me what to say, and it will give you a few quick generic suggestions, but the suggestions are not right. specific to what your task is. But yes, Kara, you're right. And there's also a command that the command is show commands. So actually I can say, wake up, show commands. And it takes me to that list of 11 categories. So what you're saying is true and that's one thing. So show me what to say, we'll give you um, some suggestions. I can do that. Show me what to say. Show me what to say. So these are some specific suggestions to what I'm doing. Two. And then behind it is the list of the 300 commands divided into 11 categories that I was mentioning earlier. Oh, Eddie, we're getting a little delay with you. Hold on. Can you say something? I think we might be back. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm getting a little um, indicator that uh, my internet is a little slow. How's that now? That's great. Um, we actually had a question um, that I think this is a, a great question that you've you've gone over these uh, three solutions. Uh, how do how does someone know which one's right for them? How do they choose which one of these is right? Well, there's there's really two questions in your question. Is from these, th th there there are only th three that are are similar. So 
the voice input systems differ by platform. So the, often that's an indicator. So if you have an iPhone, you're going to use voice control. If you need a Windows computer for work, let's say, you're going to use perhaps Dragon. Um, but the larger question of how do I decide what I need um, is really something that Bridging Voice specializes in, which is answering the question, uh, I'm a PALS and what do I need? What do I need now? Um, uh, this is what I can do and this is what I want to do and this is what I need to do. Um, so uh, often I say, what do you want to do and what can you do it with? So um, that's really what we call assessment or evaluation and we'll help you figure that out. So. Uh, be in touch with us and we'll help you figure that out. But, but very often it, the decision is made by, by platform um, and in alternate access, it's the degree of hand function. So, and I would say that one of the reasons why I'm harping, if you will, on voice input, voice input, voice input is because it's a real game changer. It's, uh, you know, for someone who is struggling uh, with tapping out letters and making a mistake on every other letter and can suddenly transform into navigating fully with their voice and dictating with their voice, that can be a huge game changer. So um, there are limitations on, you know, what speech uh, intelligibility it will accept. But if you can use a voice input system, it makes a huge difference. But the answer is assessment and evaluation. Fabulous. And then Audrey just dropped a link into the chat here about adjusting the cursor back to that question about if you can customize the cursor shape. Um, so if anyone's interested in that, um, there's a link with more details, although it does seem like it's kind of limited, like Eddie was saying. Uh, fabulous. We just have a couple more minutes in case there's any final questions that people want to drop into the chat. I also want to make a uh, request. Um, since this is our last training of 2021, um, we are putting together our end of the year report and I would love a photo of one of our Zoom trainings. So I would love to take a, a screenshot of everyone here in this training today. Um, so I want to invite anyone who is interested in being in that photo to take off um, their video. Uh, and um, if you're not interested, no worries at all. Um, you can leave your video uh, off, um, but it would just be wonderful to see these faces. It means a lot to us that all of you guys are joining from all over the country. And um, since everything is remote, it's just lovely to have a photo of everyone together, even on this virtual platform. Um, uh, one more question here while people are turning off their videos, Eddie, is do we have items, devices for trial? Um, so Bridging Voice in general is not a, a, a loaning organization. Um, voice control and voice access, what, what I presented today, voice control and voice access are free and built in. Dragon, uh, if you, uh, again, through assessment, through assessment with Bridging Voice, uh, we can direct you to a, a grant organization who will give you a Dragon professional group license use. Um, and uh, you can try it and then the license, if it doesn't work, just they'll just take the license back. So that works quite well. The Kensington Expert Mouse, uh, you might find in an ALS loan closet. Um, and um, I like to say that um, uh, Amazon would like you to try their products and if it doesn't work for you, return it. So I call that evaluation um, and uh, $84. So that's how you get a trial uh, of these devices. Um, if you can't find it in a loan closet, then um, buy it, try it, return it. Great tip. Okay, we're going to take a quick photo. Thank you guys for, for uh, humoring me with this. Um, we have two pages of people. So I'm going to take two photos. Uh, one, two, three cheese <laughs> <laughs> and then you're going to take the second page my team is laughing at me but i appreciate this one two three cheese okay um fabulous we have one more question coming in uh oh this is a great point from audrey um you have uh you may have a state-funded loan closet that provides access to assistive technology 
Ohio has, has an assistive technology loan closet where you can borrow Dragon Dictation and try out for one month free, for example. Um, so that's great. That's a great suggestion to see if your state has some of these um, uh, funded loan closet. Uh, Leah says you can also contact the companies directly to get a one month trial of devices. Also feel free to contact Bridging Voice. We're always ha happy to help connect you to our um, partners and point you in the right direction. Um, I think we are right at time. So Eddie, thank you for that wonderful presentation. Um, it's a great way to end uh, our 2021 training series. Um, and there will be more of these in the future. Thank you to all of you for joining us. Reach out to us if we can be of uh, service to you at all. Um, we will be sending a follow-up email with the link to this recording. And uh, since we, if we don't see you before then or talk to you before then, have a happy and wonderful holidays and new year. And um, we'll see you next time. Bye.